Inga Lotz was a promising South African student, born on July 28, 1984 in Stellenbosch, a picturesque town in the Cape Winelands of the country, known for its vineyards and academic institutions. She was known for her intelligence, passion and the promise of a bright future. However, her life was tragically cut short and her name has since become synonymous with a high-profile murder case that remains unsolved to this day. Growing up, Inga's potential was seemingly limitless and she had the world at her feet. Inga grew up in an environment that encouraged intellectual curiosity, her family playing a significant role in shaping her early years. Her father, Professor Jan Lotz, was a respected professor at Stellenbosch University. This academic environment likely had a profound influence on Inga's own academic pursuits and her dedication to her studies. Inga attended high school in Stellenbosch, where her academic excellence continued to shine, as well as her exceptional talent at soprano singing. She stood out as a gifted student who consistently achieved top marks. Her teachers described her as diligent, enthusiastic and eager to explore the complexities of her chosen subjects. Inga's academic achievements earned her numerous accolades and sent her on a path towards a bright future in academia. Following her graduation from high school, Inga entered Stellenbosch University, an institution known for its rigorous academic standards and rich cultural heritage. There, she pursued a bachelor's degree in actuarial science. After successfully achieving her bachelor's degree, Inga began pursuing a master's degree in mathematical statistics. It was 2005 and Inga was living alone in a high security apartment complex, specifically 21 Shiraz in Klein Welgevonden, located on the outskirts of Stellenbosch. 22 year old Inga was very safety conscious and never stayed out late. She waited until all safety mechanisms, such as two security gates and burglar-proof bars, were installed in the Shiraz apartment before she moved in. She was notably very close to her parents, and always made sure to contact them every day. More specifically, she would give them both a call each morning. It was Wednesday the 16th of March 2005. Inga's boyfriend of approximately one year, Fred van de Weyer, had stayed overnight in her apartment, which was not unusual as he tended to stay over every Tuesday night. Like Inga, Fred was from an affluent and wealthy family and was a devout member of the People's Church, which Inga and her family were also a part of. Cracks began to show in the pair's relationship, however, with Fred's religious views proving difficult for Inga. He was very conservative and believed in saving himself for marriage and furthermore, believed it sinful to engage in any kind of physical touch before matrimony. Inga had grown frustrated at this and vented to close friends, believing that her boyfriend no longer had romantic feelings for her, despite the couple having discussed marriage in the past. Fred worked at an insurance company in Cape Town and lived in an apartment near to his work with a roommate, Marius Botha. Fred left the apartment for work, leaving Inga alone at home. Prior to that morning, Inga had contacted a tile contractor to arrive at the apartment to fix some tiles. She met with the contractor when she departed the complex, however she requested for the contractor to return later when she was at home. Inga met with Fred for a short time before she was to attend a lecture at university and then had lunch with her friend, Vimpy Boshoff. She returned home at 1.55pm where the contractors were working. They then left once the job was complete. At 2.55pm, Inga was witnessed on CCTV at a Steers restaurant where she purchased a burger and then subsequently went to a rental shop where she picked up a DVD. She then returned back to her apartment, where she changed into loungewear. At approximately 10.30pm that night, Crystal Pretorius, a friend of Fred's flatmate Marius Botha, entered Inga's home, with her loved ones concerned that she had not contacted them in several hours. Upon entering her property, he saw Inga. As the DVD she had rented played on the television, with the DVD case lying on a nearby table, she was sitting lifelessly on the couch, having been bludgeoned to death. 
Reports stated that it appeared she had been reading a magazine when she was brutally attacked. She had suffered over 50 injuries, her head, face and right hand showing signs of having been struck with a blunt weapon, experts believing the weapon to have been a hammer. There were approximately 20 stab wounds present in her neck. Her killer then tried to dispose of blood evidence by using the facilities in the bathroom. However, they had left a bloody towel behind, as well as blood spatter in the sink and a bloody shoe print on the floor. It was evident that Inga had been taken by surprise, the remote control for the television still in her hand, with the magazine open. It appeared that there were no signs of forced entry, and no valuable items had been taken, ruling out robbery as a motive. Two items were noted as missing, which were a kitchen knife and the remote control used by residents in the apartment complex. The injuries that Inga had suffered suggested that the attack was personal and carried out by someone in a fury, and was someone she knew. Investigators found that in the hours leading up to Inga Lotz's murder, the power supply to the security gates at the apartment complex had been severed. Authorities turned their attention to all of those who had experienced a close relationship with Inga, including Marius Botha, Vimpy Boshoff and her boyfriend, Fred van der Weyer. Fred had a solid alibi and had been at work from 11am to 6pm on the day in question, with surveillance footage confirming his alibi. Botha, on the other hand, stated that he was at his apartment, however there was no evidence to support this. Allegedly, he had developed romantic feelings towards Inga, however, there was once again no evidence to link Botha to the murder. Wiener Karolis, a 17-year-old drug dealer, confessed to authorities that he killed Inga. However, when communicating with the police, his story continued to change. He then retracted his statement and authorities ultimately dismissed his confession. Police turned their attention to Fred van de Weyer. It was discovered that their relationship was strained due to Fred's religious views. Fred said that he last saw Inga before she went to lunch with Vimpy Boshoff, and the couple's discussion had been pleasant. Vimpy, however, when speaking to police, told them that at lunch on the day of the murder, Inga had told him that she and Fred had engaged in a heated fight, one which Inga believed would likely lead to the end of their relationship. According to Vimpy, he told Inga she was being overly dramatic, causing Inga to change her mind and look forward to a healthy future with Fred. Inga's parents, Jan and Juanita, had strong opinions about Fred van de Weyer. Her father said he was controlling and manipulative, with her mother stating that she had heard arguments between Inga and Fred and also had been witness to Fred's controlling behaviour in regards to what Inga could and couldn't wear in public. On the night of Inga's murder, Fred told South African police that he was at the Lutz family residence. Juanita stated that she witnessed Fred sitting in his car. At their short meeting prior to lunch, Inga had written a two-page note for Fred, the contents of which being unclear, however, Fred referred to it as a love letter. Juanita discovered the letter's existence and requested to look at it, however, Fred refused. Exploring Inga's apartment, authorities discovered a fingerprint on the DVD case. The fingerprint was confirmed as having belonged to Fred van de Weyer, subsequently obtaining a search warrant for van de Weyer's property. They found a sports shoe which had been recently washed. The pattern and size of the shoe allegedly matched the bloody shoe print found in Inga's bathroom. The police also questioned Fred regarding his possession of a hammer. He had an ornamental hammer, which was also a bottle opener. The item had been gifted to him by Inga's loved ones. The hammer was recovered from his car. Re-examining Fred's alibi, it appeared that there was a notable period of time where no activity on either Fred's phone or computer was recorded, and this was noted as having been between 3.30pm and 5.15pm. Three months after Inga's murder, Fred handed himself into police, but maintained his innocence. The evidence that police had gathered was enough for authorities to arrest and charge him with the murder of Inga. In February of 2007, over two years since the murder, Fred van der Weyer went on trial. 
The fingerprint was analysed by other experts who testified that the print was lifted from a curved surface such as glass, which contradicts with the fact that the fingerprint was taken from a flat DVD case. This put the fingerprint to evidence in doubt and many other experts agreed that the print was lifted from a glass. Police made many errors in the investigation. These included the fact that police wandered around Inga's apartment without taping off the scene for collection of forensic evidence. They also returned the DVD to the rental store where Inga had picked it up from. Questioning the gap in time on the day of the murder, it was determined that Fred would not have been physically able to drive to and from work, change clothes and kill Inga in the inactive time frame suggested by his phone and computer. The contractor workers were, for reasons unknown, not questioned at the time. The contractor company dissolved and the workers, most of whom were employed illegally, vanished, with police unable to trace any of them for later questioning. The defence presented a brief, affectionate letter allegedly penned by the victim to the accused prior to her murder as evidence. However, the handwriting in the letter seemed to deviate significantly from any known sample of her writing, suggesting a potential forgery. The shoe print evidence was then examined. An expert witness had allegedly previously stated that he believed the shoe print belonged to Fred. However, at trial, when called for the defence, he stated it was not possible to determine whether the blood evidence in the bathroom was even a shoe print at all. Numerous blood stains, potentially originating from the murder weapon, were apparent in crime scene photographs, but were neither recorded nor analysed. The alleged murder weapon, Fred's ornamental hammer, was examined and there were no traces of DNA or blood evidence. It was suggested in court that the hammer was not the same as the weapon which had struck Inga. It was reported in 2013 that investigator Christian Botha, not to be confused with Fred's flatmate Marius Botha, told police that on the afternoon of Lotz's murder, a cohort of youngish people involved with drugs had devised a plan to rob her residence. They trailed her from Stellenbosch University to her apartment complex. However, upon reaching the location, Botha noted that Lotz was already under assault. He stated, when one got to the door, he looked through the kitchen window and saw the person hitting her. They just ran. After severe mishandling of forensic evidence and inconsistent opinions from expert witnesses, the controversial trial concluded in November of 2007. Fred van de Weyer was found not guilty of the murder of Inga Lotz. The case has since been the subject of intense scrutiny, with debates about the efficiency of forensic methods and the impact of these controversies on the pursuit of justice. Despite not finding answers or Inga's killer, the case is officially closed. Inga's parents, however, offered a 1 million rand reward for any information regarding the death of their beloved daughter.